Hello everyone, welcome to the September coffee tasting, subscription coffee tasting. That's what we're going to call these videos now because the format has changed a little bit due to Corona. Uh, I'm all by myself and uh, well, I might invite some guests uh, uh, in future videos again, but uh, at the moment we're seeing more and more people getting the coronavirus again, so we have to be a little bit more careful. So, like the two last videos we made, we are going to do a small little cup tasting session uh, with the coffees we're going to send out in the first Wednesday of September to all our coffee subscribers. And we have three very nice, very delicious <laughs> coffees uh, today to taste. Uh, two of them are from Kenya, just because it's been really hot in Norway uh, up until now. So, I still feel like yeah, I want to drink these kind of more refreshing coffees and then I have a little uh, surprise at the end, a geisha honey processed uh, coffee from uh, the Caballero family. Uh, we sent this out in March, I think, but due to the Corona outbreak, a lot of the mail got lost in the, or the shipments got lost in the mail. So a lot of the subscribers didn't actually get that coffee. So I decided we still had a little bit left and we also uh, got some new ones. So I decided we should send that out uh, so that everyone can taste this wonderful coffee. It's quite expensive so we're actually losing a little bit of money on that but um, you know whatever we can uh, do to make you happy uh, for me it's just a matter of sharing a very delicious coffee and um, the more people who can taste it the better I think so what better is to to treat our um, loyal subscribers with this delicious coffee okay if you want to know how to set up the cup tasting it's quite simple you need a cup some water the coffees a spoon it could be a normal spoon or a soup spoon and a spittoon if you want to spit or just stand by the sink and spit into the sink or uh, you can swallow which is probably a little bit more hygienic and also delicious. Um, I normally measure 11 grams in these cups and they take about 180 grams of water uh, so I recommend using like 6 grams to uh, 100 grams of water or 5.5 grams to 100 grams of water whatever you feel like in that kind of range. Uh, it's nice to have it not too strong, so it's a little bit easier to taste the differences, I think. Um, I did a full kind of a setup on the, what was it, the July video. So if you want to see how to do it, just check the first 5-10 minutes of the July video and you can see how we do this. Alright, on to the coffees. We received a container from uh, Kenya this summer uh, and in that container we had many different lots of coffee. For instance from Karagoto washing station which we have been buying from many many years. We actually bought six different lots. Three of them were Peaberry and three of them were double A's. And when I'm saying double A and Peaberry I'm referring to the size of the beans. Now the Peaberry and the double A came from the same lot but they are separated by size in Kenya. which makes it a lot easier for us to roast the coffee because it roasts more evenly. Uh, we're sending out double A's today. Uh, the first one is from a group of farmers in Embu. Uh, it's not far from Nairobi, it takes a couple of hours to drive. But it's an area that hasn't been that known for growing good coffee. But they do grow some fantastic coffee. Uh, and some of the washing stations that are there is one that's called Key, which you can uh, sometimes buy through drop coffee roasters in, in uh, Stockholm. Um, and so there is for sure potential there. Now this uh, particular coffee is from a growers group called What A New. Um, we, some people say we are new, some people say what a new. It's actually spelled what a new, but if you ask the farmers, they sometimes say we are new. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what they're playing on. Uh, it's a group of farmers who came together. They built a washing station together. And there's an agronom agronomist called James Karyuku who, who are teaching the farmers how to grow more cherries per tree. So that means even if they can't expand the amount of land that they grow coffee on, they can ex uh, increase the quantity by treating the trees better. So they claim to be organic. They're actually not because they're do they are spraying some, uh, some copper spray and, and uh, stuff, which kind of is allowed in organic farming, but not too much. Um, but they are kind of focusing on using goat manure and not too much fertilizer and so on. 
And they're using a system called a one stem system, which means uh, it's actually a little uh, controversial how they do it, but they have one trunk, like you, know, you can see in many other countries, and then they have m many big laterals that are growing a lot of coffee, and they're using mainly the SL28 tree, but they have some farmers also growing uh, Ruiru 11 trees. And uh, what you can see is that uh, instead of the average, I think, in Kenya, which is each tree producing around five kilograms of coffee cherries per tree, they can produce up to 100 kilos of coffee cherries per tree. It seems hard to believe, but I've seen it with my own eyes, and it's incredible. Uh, I think, you know, the average is probably more like 20 to 30 kilos per tree, but imagine that, you can four or five, five times the production just by treating the tree differently and uh, pruning it well, uh, planting it with a good distance, you know, digging big holes in the ground for the tree to expand the roots fast when they're new. And I've actually learned a couple of uh, tricks from this uh, group and from James Karyuki because I visited them a couple of times. And I've used that on my own farm, Finca El Suelo in Colombia. And especially digging big holes before you plant the trees and then plant the tree in it has really helped. And actually, I'm expecting a harvest on my own farm just one and a half year after I planted some new trees with this system. And as a comparison, I have other trees that are five years old that are still not yielding any cherries. So it is quite effective. So what in you? It's a group of farmers in Embu, uh, mainly SL28, some Ruido 11. Um, this coffee is coming from different elevations. Some of the farmers are actually quite low altitude, down to 1300 meters. But the highest one, highest lying farms are around 1500 meters. Uh, and because they only have one washing station, they tend to mix these together. Having said that, they, the lower altitudes will normally harvest a month earlier than the uh, higher altitudes. So kind of they do lot separation and I cut through a lot of the lots and some of them weren't fantastic, I have to say this year, but uh, a few were very, very good. Um, and I think not only is it because they mixed the different altitudes, but also they had terrible weather. You know, they had almost record uh, rainfall in December during harvest. And I was there and, you know, you, I was driving through the coffee, coffee country or up country, as they call it. And you could see like floods of water everywhere. And it was just extremely wet. So fortunately, we managed to get some nice coffees despite all the rain. So let's taste the uh, water new coffee. And as always, it's, it's kind of difficult to just taste one coffee at a time. So if you're subscribing to one bag, I suggest you just get a supermarket coffee or something else to compare it to. And then it's much easier to pick out the flavors. Well, the first thing I taste with this coffee is that the, the mouthfeel is quite kind of big, I call it. it. It's kind of thick in the mouth, which is a good thing. We call it big body. It has this kind of almost vanilla-like uh, sweetness and a lot of a uh, kind of red berry character, more maybe towards this kind of black currant bush uh, flavor. Mm. Really intense, that kind of vanilla flavor as well. So quite fruity, not as intense when it comes to acidity as you can expect from other Kenyans, uh, and quite powerful, like strong body, sweet, like vanilla-like uh, aftertastes. You know, you can taste other things as well. This is just my first impression. So if you taste black berries instead of black currants, totally fine. You know, we're all a little different and we, we perceive flavor a little bit different. So there's no right or wrong here. It's just that's how I perceive the coffee. Mm. Yeah, very nice uh, mouthfeel. Quite lingering, long, sweet uh, finish. That reminds me of this kind of vanilla. Uh, and, uh, and kind of purple berries, if you know what I mean. The second coffee is from a uh, quite known washing station, I would say now, because we've been buying coffee from that washing station for many, many, many years. And I think it was 2011 where we sponsored eight metal drying tables for this uh, washing station. Uh, through our uh, kind of anniversary uh, collection, we collected money on our anniversary. 2011, that must have been our four-year anniversary. So uh, I think we raised around $5,000, which 
was enough money to, to build you know, eight huge metal drying tables. And the good thing about the metal drying tables is that the ants that eat you know, termites, they don't eat the wood so that the tables are quite stable. And I was there in December and you know, apart from they need a little bit of paint, they look brand new still, uh, which is great. So Karagoto is located in Nyeri, which is kind of the Champagne region of uh, Kenya. I don't believe it's necessarily or necessary much better area than other areas in Kenya. It's just there was a lot of focus on the area coffees in uh, the kind of beginning of uh, specialty or that's where some of those uh, agronomist organizations were located and of course they were able to help the farmers in the nearby area. So, uh, but these coffees uh, are quite high, high altitude, it's 16 to 1700 meters from memory. They have very cool nights, uh, you know, me me medium temperature uh, during daytime. And most of the farmers are still growing SL28, SL34 varieties. Some of them have Ruiru, of course. Some of them have the new Batian. And all these are all mixed together in a, at the cooperative uh, washing station and, and then uh, processed together. And then it gets sorted by grade, you know, the, the density of the beans in the washing channels. Also afterwards, it's sorted by size. It's kind of a huge, uh, long uh, process for the coffee to, to, to be ready. Now the Karagoto coffees for me are always special uh, because they're always a little floral, very elegant and very bright and nice. Mm. I love these coffees. Now, Isolated, it's a very elegant, um, a little bit more light-bodied coffee, uh, very floral, has a lot of fruit, more like rose hips, you know, hibiscus or flor de jamaica for some of you. Uh, you can find a little bit of this kind of more like uh, garden berries, uh, raspberries, you know, some people also find black currant here. I don't find it that much. It's more of this kind of more elegant rose hip uh, kind of flavor. Some people find black tea. It's very, very elegant coffee. Now compared to the Wadi Nu. Mm. Then I can really feel how, how much more power the Wadi Nu has and more, more body. Whereas the Karagoto. So clean and elegant. It's it's just a beautiful coffee, and it's kind of recognizable on the tables. I think year after year it has this kind of characteristics, uh, and you can compare it to washing stations nearby, and it still kind of is a standout for me because it's a little different than the others. Um, I was there in December, and all, they also received tons and tons of rain, but I talked to the washing station manager Efraim, and he we kind of agreed that he would focus on when the peak of the harvest was he would focus on making sure making or paying much more attention to those lots because uh, they did have uh, capacity problems and uh, because of the rain so um, they managed to produce uh, quite a lot of uh, very very nice coffee so that's the second coffee we're going to send out to everyone who subscribed to two bags or more the third coffee is a little preview of what you can get uh, next month as well. Mm -mm -mm. Third coffee is from the Caballero family in Honduras. And uh, yeah, it's not really a Kenyan coffee, but it's still very floral, elegant and citrusy. It's a geisha, honey processed uh, from their farm. And for me, this is probably their best geisha. Uh, their washed geisha, geisha is also very, very good, but this is a little bit more pronounced in the kind of floral flavors. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to pick out. Um, they don't produce a lot of this, just a little bit. And that's just because when you do honey process, it's quite difficult to get it to this level. It's so clean, so nice. Um, sometimes you get these kind of pulpy flavors. So the weather has to be you know, perfect. The drying is, has to be meticulous. And Moises is doing a fantastic job with this coffee. Uh, what more can I say? I mean, they won the Cup of Excellence with the Geisha coffee, I think three years ago, but that was the washed ver version. This is the honey processed. Honey processed being that they depulp the cherry and they dry the, the remaining bean, 
with the mucilage left on the parchment skin around the bean on drying tables. And Moises is doing this on, by his house, not where the mill and the farms are. So the climate is a little uh, drier and, and hotter uh, where his house is in Markala. And that means he can pay more attention to the coffee. He has a couple of workers there who come in every day they, and they rake the coffee every day and they, they, they cover the coffee if it's too hot and so on. So this is dried on the shade um, um, and been taken very, very well care of. Mm. So the honey geisha going out to all three bag subscribers and more. Um, I would say this has a very nice flavor of mandarin. That's the fruit. Mandarin. Some people say tangerine. For me, tangerine is a little bit more tart in the acidity. Mandarin is a little bit sweeter. It's the kind of citrus that we eat for Christmas here in Norway. And it's floral for sure. It's not that kind of more jasmine floralness that you can get in the Panamanian one. It's just more, yeah, maybe like orange blossom or... Mm. It's very, very delicate. And a little bit more kind of honey uh, sweetness, I think. Uh, you get a slight hint of this kind of green bell pepper, but that's kind of it for all their coffees uh, from the Caballeros. They always have this kind of slight green bell, um, <laughs> green bell pepper uh, undertone, which I find uh, actually to be very nice. But y you can clearly taste it when you have this caragoto next to it. Mm. Ooh, the caragoto is beautiful. Wow, it's like drinking wine almost. So those are the three coffees we're sending out. Um, we are sending in now uh, to all over the world uh, with a few exceptions and that's due to customs and so on, but we're uh, shipping worldwide. You can subscribe for up to six bags. Uh, I will choose the bags or the coffees. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six bags. Uh, this month we're sending out the same coffee, just double the amount of bags to the four, five and six bag subscribers. Uh, you can also actually subscribe to another one, which is where you can mix espresso and filter. Um, and you can also give a subscription as a gift to yourself or a friend if you want to just prepay and get coffees every month. We send out the first Wednesday of the month. Um, and normally shipping times has been quite slow during the COVID uh, area, but, uh, or era, but we're seeing that it's speeding up now. So it's not six weeks anymore, but uh, it's still a little bit more delayed than it was before <laughs> Corona. Uh, before Corona, it could take, you know, a week be before the coffee arrived uh, to your home from when we shipped it. Now it can take maybe two to three weeks. But we flush our bags with nitrogen, so the coffees are still tasting fresh and nice when you get them. And if you need any brewing tips or uh, grinding tips for these coffees, we will make a video exclusive for our subscribers that we will send out or publish uh, about a few days after we send out the coffees. Whew, that was a lot of information. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you enjoy this, this month's coffees. Next month, you can uh, look forward to some Beautiful coffees from the Caballero family. We are sending out many different varieties, so stay tuned for that.